Now, what if I tell you you can run Grand Prix 2 natively on a modern Windows without any need of DOS emulators? What if I tell you it's got a widescreen support? What if I tell you it has a native controller support so you can easily run it with modern racing hardware? What if I tell you you can even play it with a manual age pattern gearbox with a working clutch? What if I tell you that's just scratching the surface? And it's very easy to install and try out, you don't need any skills on MS-DOS or emulating old games. Although this mod is still very much work in progress, uh, if you're a fan of Grand Prix 2, well, even if you're just slightly interested of Grand Prix 2, I sincerely believe you should check this out. This mod is called X82GP2 and is the work of Hatcher. I've been very eager to get to show it here on YouTube and now Hatcher has decided to release a public alpha, so here we go. It is still in early alpha, but it's already very impressive. Hatcher has done an insane amount of background work. After reverse engineering Grand Prix 2 for years, and after a lot of trial and error, the project is now off the ground. And the progress has been really rapid for the last few months. So let's go through some of the things this add-on brings to the game. Basically, it's a program that runs Grand Prix 2 natively on Windows without the need of DOS emulator, such as DOSBox. So you just need a copy of Grand Prix 2, then download a few files, follow instructions and you're good to go. Because the code is run natively in Windows, the performance is brilliant. Also, there's no input lag whatsoever, thus the driving experience is better than ever. Because of the great performance, uh, Hatcher has been able to use multi-rendering. Thus he's managed to bring widescreen support. You can now look left and right, also the mirrors are new and show actual 3D cars instead of sprites. And as you obviously can see, there are spinning tires and a moving steering wheel for you to enjoy. Also some experimental testing with higher frame rates are underway. This is not in the public alpha yet, but in this clip we're driving in 52 frames per second, natively without frame generation. It works okay apart from the AI decision making that is a little bit glitched. As I said, this is work in progress. X86 GP2 has got native controller support, so you can have multiple controllers such as separate pedals, stick shifters, etc. You can use a modern direct drive wheel or whatever you have and it's easy to set up. Because the controls have been abstracted away from the in-game calibration, you'll get the full resolution of a modern wheel sent into the game and have the maximum wheel resolution supported by GP2. Again, driving experience is better than ever. It's incredibly accurate and I've managed to get slides like never before in Grand Prix 2. If you like to drive older mods from the 80s and before, you can choose to use an age pattern gearbox to add immersion. With a perfectly working clutch, of course. Again, one of those things I thought would never be possible in Grand Prix 2. Hatcher indeed is a wizard. You can also bind functionality into your wheel, like looking left or right, or pausing the game. The replay feature is still very much work in progress, but for now you have a rudimentary controls for the replay. There should be a separate TV window in the future, so you can actually watch the race whilst you race. There's a link in the description to the forums where you can find the files and instructions. Bear in mind, this is an early alpha, but as I said, the progress has been very rapid lately, so stay tuned for updates. Here are some things that are planned for this amazing mod in the future. Support for triple monitor setups, mod supports. Modding will be done through loading them inside the game, not by overwriting existing files like before. Improving the frame rate uh, we talked about earlier and a lot more stuff I've probably already forgotten. Tell me in the comments what would you want to see in GP2 that before this seemed impossible to implement. And of course to end this video we have to do a little quick race against the AI in a simtech with a manual gearbox. And here we are at the back of the grid in our 1994 Simtech Fords with a manual transmission. 
indeed. Uh, in real life, I believe this this Simtech uh, had a manual gearbox early in 1994. One of the last cars to have uh, a manual gearbox in F1. However, uh, please don't crash. Uh, they, I don't think they had an 8 pattern shifter. I think they used flappy paddles. Uh, but they, the, 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 it was a manual gearbox. They had uh, a clutch and everything. But I think they updated to into an automatic gearbox. Uh, sorry, semi-automatic gearbox during 1994. Obviously, the last car to have a manual gearbox in F1 was Ford in 1995. But I would guess. Oh, that was dangerous. Uh, oh, no. We crashed with our teammates. That's all right. And I missed the gear. But yeah, I, I don't think Forty had uh, missed the gear again and lost the position against my teammates. Yeah, it's hard. It's really hard. Uh... Yeah, 40, I don't think uh, had uh, an age pattern gearbox either. I'm sure everybody used flappy paddles at that point, even though they had manual gears. But yeah, it's, it's very hard to use with a modern F1 car. Well, uh, these cars obviously are 30 years old, but you know, modern-ish, I suppose. At least compared to the ones in the 60s or something. And as you can see, I am skipping gears when going into turns. I don't have fast enough hands and legs to go through all the gears when breaking into turns. But yeah, this uh, feature is extremely good, cool if you wanna wanna race like uh, mods from the 80s or. Well, maybe 70s, 60s, or whatever, during the era of F1 when they used manual gears. So this is, a, in my opinion, a really, really cool thing to have in the game. Obviously, this uh, program is not yet compatible with uh, mods. Mod support will be coming at some point. I think we are side by side with somebody. Got past, and I missed a gear. Missing a gear is very, very bad. You lose a lot of speed, as you can see. And Hatcher actually has uh, implemented a kind of a experimental engine breaking into the game as well. So uh, the engine actually breaks. If you shift down, it doesn't really unsettle the car, but it, it kind of works. However, that is still kind of an, in an experimental stage, and uh, apparently at the moment it breaks the replay because uh, it's a completely physical replay, and um, it kind of breaks the physics in, in the replay. So we'll see what happens with that in the future. Stay away from the wall of the champions. That was a messy and poor race and bad driving, but we get P24, which is actually pretty good uh, for a Simtech. So time for conclusion. From what I've seen, I can tell that if this mod progresses the way it has during the last month, uh, it will be a game changer. I will most certainly move my Grand Prix 2 playing here. In fact, if the mod support was there, I'd do it already. By the time you watch this video, there are probably a bunch of updates out already. So stay tuned for the progress. Uh, this has all the potential to bring Grand Prix 2 into the modern day, while still staying loyal to the original work by Jeff Grammont. So what are your thoughts on the mod? Leave a comment below, I'm sure Hatcher is also very interested. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next race.